There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the galvanic cell and described how the galvanic cell works. And also, we watched an animation to show how the galvanic cell works to visualize it. In this video, we're going to cover something quite similar. Um, it says, outline the construction of the galvanic cell and trace the direction of electron flow. So, two parts we have to outline the construction and trace the direction of the electron flow. So, when it comes to the outline part, outline just means we need to be able to know how to construct, like outline the steps involved when it comes to constructing a galvanic cell. And we also need to obviously be able to trace the direction of electron flow. So which direction has it to do with electron flow? I'll cover, this is the um, same image we had last time. And I'll label again, I'll label the important parts. We had our wires here. We had our electrodes here. So our zinc electrode and our copper electrode. Our two electrodes. We had our salt bridge, which is usually just paper, and then it's um, sunk into some sort of salt. It can be sodium chloride, or it could be a different type of salt. So we have a salt bridge. We have electrolytes, which is the electrolyte solution. Electrolyte solution. And it's in both of the parts. So both of the zinc electrode half cell and the copper um, half cell, both of them have electrolyte solution. And also, the one thing I mentioned last time was we have something called a voltmeter, which would be just somewhere around here. And that would be connected to measure the flow of electrons. So this would give you a reading, so we might get, you know, 0 0.1. 1, 10, 0 0.10 volts if electricity flows. So when we're constructing, the reason why we need all these parts is we need to have the wire. So we need to have the wire so the electrons can flow. So I'm going to write electrons can flow. I'm going. We need to have these two electrodes. Um, there are two different names for it. One was the anode. In this case, zinc is the anode. And the other one is the cathode. In this case, copper is the cathode. And I'll explain why there are the cathode and the anode. Um, but we, need, we need those to be able to make sure that we actually have um, one electrode that donates electrons. This one is the giver electrons. So the anode gives electrons. Or the, or the metal at the anode is being oxidized, gives electrons. And that was the oxidation. So the anode is being oxidized. Oxidation. So zinc in this case is being oxidized. And the one which is being oxidized is always the anode. On the other hand, we have the cathode, which is this one here. In this case, it's copper. And copper is the one that takes electrons. So copper takes electrons. takes electrons and therefore is being reduced. So whatever is at the cathode has to be reduced and copper is being reduced because reduction is gain of electrons. And if you can't, um, if you always have confusion, if you're still confused with those terms oxidation and reduction, just remember those, this acronym, oil rig. Oxidation is loss. So in this case, the anode, the electrode at the anode has lost electrons. Oxidation is loss. And reduction is gain. So in this case, the electrode being um, the cathode, which was the copper electrode, has taken electrons. So reduction is gain. So it has taken, gained electrons, has been reduced. So we've got oil rig, which is a good acronym to remember oxidation and reduction. Um, yeah, but we need to have these to be able to have one which gives electron, which is usually the anode, 
and one which takes electrons, which is usually cat, which is always the cathode. Um, we have these electrolyzed solutions. Without these electrolyzed solutions, we would have no electricity flow, no flow of electricity. So the electrolyzed solution is important for the flow of electricity. And we've got the salt bridge. And you can imagine a salt bridge is kind of thing that connects a circuit. It's almost like a circuit. So connects the two half cells. So each of these is a half cell and they are both connected. So these are the important parts when it comes to constructing a galvanic cell. We need to have the two electrodes, one of it being the anode, the other one being the cathode. We need to have the electrolyte solution. Um, we need to have a salt bridge. We need to have a voltmeter to measure the electron flow. And a wire so the electrons can pass through. So in this case, it also says trace the direction of electron flow. So it is actually going to go from the, uh, this electrode. It's going to go from the anode, always from the anode. So this is supposed to be the, this color here, the yellow, it's supposed to be the direction of the um, electrons. It's going to go from the anode and it's going to travel to the cathode. It's always going to travel this way. It's always going to go from anode to cathode. Now, on the anode, we have the more, the more reactive metal, more or more active metal is on the anode and the less active metal is at the cathode. So the less active metal is always the cathode. In this case we got zinc and we have copper. So this was zinc here. This was zinc. And the other one was copper. And zinc is actually more active than copper. So I'm going to write zinc more active than copper. So because the more active metal always has to be the anode, this makes sense. Zinc is the anode because zinc is more active. So if you look at this picture, we actually have the reverse. In this case, we actually have copper, which is on this electrode. And we have silver, but the problem is copper is actually more active and silver. So what that means is you're not going to have your electrons go from silver to copper. You're going to go have it from, go from copper to silver. Because remember why? Because the anode is always a more active metal. So in this case, the more active metal is your copper. So this is more active, which makes it the anode. And silver is the less active, which makes it the cathode. So even though in the last example we had the electrons go from zinc to copper, in this example we're going to have the electrons go from copper to zinc, uh, copper to silver, sorry. So that the silver is the cathode. And you would have your electricity go from copper through the wire and into silver. Right? So the electricity always goes from anode to cathode. And your more active metal is always your anode. And your less active metal is your silver. And if you can't remember how to figure out which ones you're more active and which ones are less active, um, there's a couple of videos back I talked about how you can figure that out. And I'm also going to talk about it again in a couple of videos time as well. But um, so you need, for this stop point, you need to be able to outline the construction of galvanic cells. You need to know which parts are important. You don't need to explain why. You just need to know what's important or what you need to include when you, when you make a galvanic cell. And you need to be able to determine the electron flow. So electrons always flow from anode to cathode. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.